Is there substantial evidence, not only here in Arizona, but in other, other states like what we presented in Pennsylvania, that Dominion was in fact connected to the Internet? Uh, are, you, are you referring to information other than the user's manual? <laughs> well, let's go back to the user's manual. Tell them about the user's manual. Uh, the the uh, Dominion Suite user's manual is, is about an inch and a half thick. Um, and uh, my, my team went back to the user's manual and looked at uh, all the instances where uh, in the user's manual uh, it tells operators to connect the Ethernet cords to the router uh, and, and it is, uh, the systems are connected to the Internet. And then uh, what evidence do you have that there actually was connection to the Internet? Uh, our teams looked at uh, spider graphs of the Dominion network uh, on Election Day and showed the, the increased uh, web traffic, Internet traffic, on Election Day for Dominion servers. So on, on Election Day, Dominion was communicating by Internet? Correct. Contrary to what Mr. Krebs said or thought? <coughs> that, that is correct. And tell us now, what, um, what's the, what, how, how, how do they take us through how the vote can be modified and then take us through <coughs> what you saw in the machine in uh, Michigan where they did actually modify the vote? So uh, um, my background uh, in the military, I uh, started off my career as an air cavalry officer, um, flying helicopters, counter reconnaissance, reconnaissance. Um, I moved uh, later into information warfare as an as a information operations officer, uh, running uh, uh, psychological operations, computer network operations, um, deception, operation security, and electronic warfare, special electronic warfare. And um, our team has been researching this specific issue since August of this year. Um, we are working with another team that's been uh, intently working on this voting machine manipulation for about two years uh, when it became apparent in the uh, Ted Cruz and Beto race in 2018 as well as the, uh, the Kentucky governor's race with, with Matt Bevins. Um, we saw significant anomalies in those races and that's kind of the experience or our, our background working with this system. And I, I would tell you as, a, uh, as an unconventional warfare uh, information operations, information warfare specialist, uh, the American populace is facing uh, an unconventional uh, warfare scenario, and this, this, is, this is information warfare. Um, the voting systems in the U.S. and uh, Arizona, in Dominion and several of the other machines, were built to be manipulated, uh, and, it, and as the mayor said, they've been used in elections uh, around the world with uh, questionable results. And uh, we believe that uh, these, these same questionable results are present in, in this election. Um, again, my, my background as um, an information warfare officer is how to get in and corrupt these machines to conduct strategic influence operations. How do I, how do I get, get the enemy or, or a targeted population in a foreign country to um, think and act a certain way? Um, these machines have multiple uh, points of injection that are um, vulnerable, everywhere from the server level where um, passwords, accesses are posted for the dark web for any hacker to, to get in and access them. And what they can do at the far, far right limit is download CSV files or like an Excel spreadsheet, change the columns and re-upload them. And, uh, that, that can be done at the server level. At the operator level, if there's software, it can be corrupted. It can be manipulated with a device that is as small and as simple as a USB device, which these machines are, are booted up and run off of. So um, the, the, the little bit of history, and I can show you some, uh, some charts on, on the DNA of these machines, but the common, uh, the common software goes back to SGO, SGO Smartmatic. Um, as Mayor mentioned, uh, they sold uh, Sequoia voting systems to Dominion in 2010, and then Diebold spun off the premier election system to Dominion as a result of the antitrust concerns. I believe that was also in 2010. 
So the bottom line is that these systems all have similar code and similar functions, and it's displayed in their operator's manual. 